The man, the myth, the legend. Warren Buffett, the leader of the gang. He's down to one. Obviously, God rest his soul, Charlie Munger passed away. Disappointing. Um, but as Berkshire Hathaway continues to just be a conglomerate, and then regardless of what's happening, continues to make money. Absolutely money-making machine. But is this company a stock to buy right now? Um, full disclosure, I'm not invested in this company at all. Um, I'm going to look at the Berkshire. Number one, the A share, but you can go to B share at a lot cheaper price, but I want to go with what the real value of this company is right here, right now. And have a look at where this company stands overall. Um, so I'm going to do a good stock analysis, stock analysis on Berkshire Hathaway from revenue, net profit, earnings per share, PE ratio, um, short interest, return on invested capital. Um, she is outstanding, free cash flow, and and so much more. And if you stay right to the end of the video, as always, I will give you a potential intrinsic value for maybe a potential buy-in for the stock, or maybe you should just run away from the hills and stay away from this company. Well, we're here to find out right here, right now, Berkshire Hathaway stock analysis for you at home. Let's go. Welcome, guys and girls, back to the channel. We are going to look into Berkshire Hathaway stock analysis right here, right now. Starting with revenue. So revenue has been going up from 322 billion in 2022, roughly, to 349 billion. So outstanding. One thing I didn't know right here, right now, is the net profit was minus 22 billion in 2022. I did not know this at all. And people were still invested in this company. Minus 22 billion. Hmm, interesting. Never thought that would happen. But they jumped back up to 70 billion in 2023, so sunny skies ahead. Earnings per share at an absolute whopping $25,471. And if you if you didn't know the share price, folks, five hundred and eighty-two thousand yeah, so five hundred and eighty two thousand dollars. So more than half a million to buy one share in this company on the top shares. There is B shares, it's a lot cheaper, but if you want to buy a proper whole share, that's how much you have to pay, folks. Sign your life away. Um, but anyway, Berkshire Hathaway is um, earning on the P ratio 22.86. So there's still a bit of growth according to the P ratio. Um, the 52 week range between 442 billion and where it is today. So it's, at, it's quite high at the moment. Um, to me, yep. This is an interesting adventure. Obviously, you always want to get the stock lower. Um, but yes, um, we'll talk about that later anyway. There's no dividends to report here, folks. So no need to talk about dividends. Short interest. This is the lowest short interest I've ever seen. I really have 0.04% the short interest on this company. I've never heard of that before. Absolutely never heard of it. Um, the market cap of $837 billion. Um, not a trillion yet, folks. Not never been to a trillion, but it could be one of the next companies he heading to a trillion. When you look at total assets, um, nine hundred forty-eight billion up to a trillion. So they got the total assets up to a trillion, folks. So it might be a matter of time before the market cap follows suit. Um, total liabilities has stayed pretty solid at one hundred and fix, four hundred sixty-seven to four hundred eighty-five. I like, I very much like it being half of what the. Total asset is that's very good and that's very interesting to me. Long term debt's gone up a bit there, 172 billion to 122 billion, so quite a bit there. Um, and their profit stayed about this. I mean, not their profit. Um, free cash flow has stayed about the same at 21.7 billion and then 21 billion in 2023. But still, then that's five years to pay off the long term debt, so a bit of work to be done there to get their long term debt down. Um, or six years, I should say. Um, she is outstanding. This is one thing about this company that it's 1.44 million, so they are bringing it down, down, down as we go along. So they are bringing it down. This she is outstanding as we go along. One, 144 billion million, I should say. Um, return on invested capital at nine percent. So they're, they're mediocre, but not too bad. At least, they're, at least you're getting money, sort of. The best way to look at it is pretty much like buying the S and P five hundred. You could argue is pretty much what this company has turned into now. Um, yes, so Berkshire Hathaway. Well, there's so many things to talk about. 
Um, company wise, obviously they own so many companies is off the shelf. You got um, some companies that they've struggled with a little bit of craft irons. They've brought into Apple. They're, they're pretty much like a, another ETF, you could argue at this stage. Um, with this company, they just own so many different um, petroleum, OP, petroleum, they, they own all over the show. This company, folks, um, yeah, I just think with Berkshire Hathaway, lots of dangers of this company. They don't invest well going forward. Um, when the day, um, when it happens, hopefully not for a long time, but when the, the great OG passes by, can the new people that take over that are there currently or they bring in able to do the same job or are they going to turn mediocre and maybe take more risk and go backwards or actually maybe they do better and actually improve the company has been a bit stagnant lately so um yeah question marks to be answered around where you see Berkshire Hathaway's future at, but it's pretty much an ETF at this point in time um, so what you all here to come came here to is intrinsic value. What is the intrinsic value of this company? Well, currently the current share price is five hundred and eighty-two thousand. At earnings per share of twenty-five thousand four hundred and seventy-one. Woohoo! With growth rate of five percent, you're looking at four hundred and ninety-one. So if yeah, you could argue it could be the current rate at the moment. So maybe you're paying a premium at the moment. Now, if you think this company is going to grow at 10%, similar to the um, return on invested capital at the same share price and earnings per share, you're looking at 756000 So you are getting a good deal, not a super, but like 40% deal on current price. So potentially, that's a good chance to look at buying there. Um, and then if you think this company is going to race up the earnings per share to 37000 a 10% growth, then you're looking at just over a billion dollars for this company, so 1.9, so you're looking pretty much a double up um, if you think they're going to jump the earnings per share up to that rate. If you think earnings per share is going to double over time to 50,000, and they can kick in their dividend revenue in at 50% growth rate, you're looking at it to, no, no, sorry, before it was 1.9 million or billion, if I said that, sorry, $2 million stock going forward. Potentially, Potentially, there's an opportunity and will get, get there, but it could take 50 years, it could take 10 years, who knows? They're going to have to grow for it to continue to get their growth rate up. When you're so big, you're going to have to find that big company at the big discount to really get yourself going before someone buys all that stock and sells it. That's the risk with this company. Now, that, that, that was the risk that I didn't put in before. So Berkshire Hathaway has all this money sitting there, right? And they normally have a, they can have a lot more money sitting around at times um if they have the money there ready to invest in a big company um like even a lower company that they believe in they can make this company 3x 4x so say they buy into a company that's 7 billion and they buy well let, let's put it up again let's say they buy a company at 20 billion and they want to buy half the shares and they can put that company up to 30 billion um a lot of people might go, hey, it's time to sell out, and boom, 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 it drops back down to 20, where it was before. If some of these people thought that it was only a short-term play, that is the risk they take, and then they've lost half of their money or a bit of, um, straight away. So that's the question mark they have. That's why they have invested into big companies like Apple and that recently. Um, if they really want to put big money in, that is the question mark you have with this company that they can probably not get the great deals down the bottom because it's just so much they can put some in but in terms of their whole portfolio it probably won't make enough of a difference for them to bother doing it um yeah so what do i see the intrinsic value right here right now i think it's probably pretty close to true market value right now um does that mean i want to invest no way no way jose um Oh, it will never happen, but it'll probably have to half in price. Half in price for me to even look at it for me, for what I can see the gains. Oh, you might as well just go an S&P 500. I think you can get better gains as an individual um, stock picker, not financial advice, do anything at your own risk. But if you, if you can see a company that is going down, 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 but it's going to continue to do well, like 
Meta's done, Netflix, stocks like that that have really dropped big, but were never going to zero. You bought them right price. Those are the sort of stocks you need to keep investing into time and time again when they make those big drops. Key thing for anything to take home, folks, always have money available every single time regardless. Um, and to me, that's one hard thing for me to even do. But I'm telling you now, if you can have 5%, 10% of whatever you got in the stock market right now, just sitting there waiting, you are on your way to being very, very, if you can get it up higher, 20, 30%, well, that's fantastic. If you can have that money ready for whenever a stock goes crashing down, because sometimes you only have weeks when the stock crashes down to an unbelievable price, got to buy it and off you go. Sometimes you have years, so... That's the risk. But if a stock gets to an actually ridiculous value, regardless if it might go down another 20, 30% from there, you get them because you never know where the bottom is, folks. Let's put it this way. Most of the time, you'll never know what the bottom is. Get them when you think it's a good price. Um, and then if you have extra money, just keep buying and buying in. You can always put half of that investment in and then see what happens. If it drops, then just buy more and more. Even if it goes up, you go, hey, I've got to buy as well. But that's, my, that's the way I invest and that's the way I think most people invest. They really want to go to the future. You can just continue buying a stock as well. But I don't, I don't see enough gains there. Um, if it's a growing company and it's just starting off, that's fine. But I think a company that's already been to the end of the earth, you wait for it to really go boom with bad news. Buy, buy, buy. And look at your money roll into the future. Anyway, that was the stock analysis on Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, can he get it done in 2024? I believe so. Am I, is the stock I'm looking to invest in? No, but if you're wanting a nice, casual, beautiful, growing company, more than likely you'll be fine. But I, I can see there'd be question mark when Warren Buffett does go. Um, question marks will be around how the company goes forward. It could be positive and they start to go higher, or it could really they start risk tasting and drop and lose money. That's the risk you take with Big Show Halfway. But anyway, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and have an awesome day out there.